everyone. Welcome to Empress and Tarot 777. My name is Kimmy and I am happy to have you here at my channel today. So there was a, a request on Sunday night's live stream in the chat. Um, somebody asked, you know, how to utilize the energy of the full moon to its fullest potential in order to manifest your wishes, your dreams, your desires, your hopes, all of those great things, right? So what I've done is I have written out for you my lovely, my lovely full moon manifestation ritual. Now I'm using the word ritual because it just means a set, a set way of doing something to produce a result. And for me, it's, it's very spiritual in nature. Now, this particular full moon ritual of mine transpires over the course of several hours. It's not something that is done in just a few minutes. It's something that I prepare for in my mind and in my heart, in my soul, spiritually speaking, I prepare myself to utilize the energy of the full moon. So it, it goes over the course of several hours. So let's begin. Don't worry, you need absolutely nothing for this. <laughs> absolutely nothing. Now, you will need a piece of paper and a pen if that is your desire to write something out, but it can everything that you do during your full moon ritual can occur right here, right here and here alone. So just to note that. So item number one, the very first step in my full moon ritual, I declutter my home and for a water sign, that takes some time. <laughs> that takes some time because I'm a Pisces and we're not known to be super, super, super cleanly. Although if you saw my apartment right now, you would be completely arguing that point with me. <laughs> so the first thing I like to do for my full moon day, we'll call it my full moon day, is declutter my home. So why am I telling you to declutter your home? It's ridiculous, right? I'm telling you to go clean. <laughs> to go put things away, to get rid of things, things of that nature. It doesn't have to be a gigantic declutter of your entire home. Your home just needs to be neat and it needs to be in a space that is allowing room for your manifestation to come into your life. If you have too much stuff, the universe says, oh, you know, John Doe doesn't need that. Jane Doe doesn't need that. Look at all that they have. There's no reason why they need this manifestation. So you have to make the space in your life for your manifestation to come true. So that's item number one, declutter. Do not skip that step. If anything, it's gonna give you a great mindset as you roll into the next steps. And declutter your home. So that would be item number one. Second thing that I do is I meditate. Now when I meditate for this meditation, when I meditate for this meditation, I specifically go into meditation with setting the intention that my spirit guides would illuminate to me the things that I need to change in my life, the things that I need to let go of and the things that I need to change. I also set the intention that they bring to my awareness anybody that I am in need of sending some sort of forgiving, loving energy to. Because sometimes we repress those thoughts, we repress those feelings that we have with regards to people that we need to release the energy from. And I ask spirit to illuminate those, th those people for me. So I'd go through this meditation. It usually lasts anywhere from 15 minutes to 45 minutes to an hour for me. When I meditate, it usually goes about close to an hour, but they can be shorter times. You know, if you're, if you are concerned about a loss of time, something of that nature, you can set yourself a time limit, set a timer on your phone to kind of wake you up out of it. I like to use love motives, 10,000 Hertz pineal gland, um, DNA activation by Neural Beats. It puts me into trance mode in an instant and connected to source. So there's a link down in the description box for that video. 
just to be clear, because YouTube requires me to say it, I get nothing for recommending Love Motives music. I am not sponsored by them. We have no sort of affiliation, no collaboration, nothing of that nature. So that just happens to be the video that I put on in the background when I meditate. I connect super easy to source to it and absolutely love it. So once I come out of that meditation, I make sure to write down, if possible, <laughs> to write down the things that spirit illuminated that I need to clear out of my life and the people that I need to forgive for whatever they may have said or done in my life, as well as whom I need to make amends to as well. So I make that list out. Now, sometimes you're not in a position where you can correct a wrong between you and another person. So when we get to the forgiveness ritual, which is two steps from here, when we get to that forgiveness ritual, I'll tell you how to deal with that so that you can clear that karma. So the next thing that I like to do, so I usually do the meditation in the morning along with the decluttering. And then in the afternoon, I like to get out in nature. It's good to be out in nature to ground yourself because you want to be grounded and you want to feel and absorb the energy of the full moon. It could be daylight hours and you could still absorb the energy of the full moon. So you want to be out amongst nature, allowing that energy to flow, allowing yourself to feel and experience the energy of nature in whatever way possible. A hike is great. If you live by the water, like I do, you know, you might want to go out to the water, especially if you're a water sign. If you're a water sign, you'll feel best by water. If you're an earth sign, you'll feel best going for a walk or a hike or something of that nature. Air sign, you, you know, you kind of want to be in motion probably. And for um, fire signs, sporting activities is really good for you. That'll kind of ground your energy. So you want to be outside in nature for a period of time. Now, when I go out for kind of my grounding aspect of my ritual, I like to use the time to reflect on what I'm going to be working on, to reflect on the things that I have to release, to reflect on the things that I'd like to bring into my life and really just thank my spirit guides for being there with me throughout everything. If you have a higher power, you can thank your higher power at that point in time. If you have none of those, you can thank your higher self. Um, you know, if you're an atheist and you know, you don't have a, any kind of belief system, maybe you're more science oriented, that's okay too. You can just sit in the energy and feel grounded and feel, um, you know, feel content. Once you get to a point where you feel pretty connected, connected to the world around you, connected to, you know, your spirit completely, um, in a way where you have no negative self-talk or anything like that. Then we move on to the forgiveness ritual. So you would want to do that back at your house when you get back, or if you want to do it out and about, you can do that as well. If you're like sitting out by a lake, you want to write it out there. That's fine too. But with the forgiveness ritual, this is preferable to have a pen and a paper. And I like to write out, I forgive so-and-so for such and such and such and such. And then I also will write out, I would like, it is my intent to send up healing energy to the connection between me and so-and-so, if I did somebody wrong, right? Me and so-and-so to bring peace between us so that there would be no more, no more, um, animosity or whatever, you know, whatever happens to be the, the feelings of emotions that you have between you and that person. So you want to, you want to touch on both the people that you've wronged as well as the people that have wronged you. And while it seems like it's a negative exercise to kind of focus on those past things, it's actually because in the next steps, you're going to release it entirely, release it entirely. And the reason you want to release that energy entirely is because when people don't release the hurts and the struggles and the difficulties that people have done to them or that they have done to somebody else, holding onto those regrets of something that they have done, it sets you in this kind of energy where you're bringing 
negative things to you because you're focused on the negative. You're focused on, on the negative past. I think it's perfectly fine to look back at the past and have, you know, beautiful memories, but don't focus on the negative. When you focus on the negative, you focus on an energy that's not good to be welling up within you on a full moon, especially on a full moon. So you want to, um, you want to be very careful and cautious of utilizing the energy in the right way. So what I do is I, I write that list out. Now it's my preference. I prefer to use fire. Fire kind of releases it out into the air, you know, but we're not all in a position where fire is safe, where fire is a good thing. Um, if you happen to have a fire pit, you know, in your backyard and it's a wood fire pit, you don't have this beautiful glass fire pit, you know, then by all means, if you want, if you want to burn your forgiveness list, feel free to do that. Um, what I used to do is I'd make small pieces of paper and I'd write out everything that, you know, I wanted forgiveness for, or I wanted to forgive somebody for. And then on the small paper, I'd write their name and I'd speak, speak the intention of forgiveness or the intention of desired forgiveness. I'd speak it out loud. And then with a little lighter, I'd light up the little tiny piece of paper and I'd let it drop in a bowl of water. That uh, does the exact same thing because you're sort of putting that energy out into the universe. It's my, like I said, it's my preference to use fire, but I don't want any, any home fires or anything like that, y'all. So please use extreme caution when working with fire and uh, you know, don't feel like it's absolutely 100% necessary for you to do that because it's not. You can just speak it out loud it's just my, my old Wiccan ways from <laughs> decades ago. I just, I just like to burn paper. It is what it is. <laughs> you should have seen the bonfires in my backyard in the, in, when I lived in South Carolina, one got to like 15 feet high. <laughs> I just like fire. So it is what it is. Um, so that's what I do with the forgiveness ritual, right? I speak it out loud after I've written it. I release it. I focus on the fact that the energy is being delivered to whomever it is that I'm asking for forgiveness from or sending forgiveness to. So I imagine their face, I imagine speaking it directly to them and releasing it out into the, into the ethers, into the energy of the full moon. After I've gone through my list of people, <laughs> hopefully it will be a short list each time, right? We don't want a big long list. We want, <laughs> we want it to be short. Uh, after I've gone through my list, my forgiveness ritual, then I move on to my gratitude ritual. And so the gratitude ritual in this state, this is a time of like immense peace. So I like to put on uh, also from Love Motives, it is what it is. <laughs> also from Love Motives, I like to put on um, some heart chakra music. So I look for binaural beats that are for the heart chakra and putting out that frequency of love because when we're thinking about gratitude, we need to think about that unconditional love, right? That that love that, that exists in the world that's available for you to tap into at any point in time if you so desire. So I put on that music in the background and I write out all the wonderful things I'm grateful for until I felt that I'm, you know, have done enough focusing on what I'm grateful for. Cause by golly, my list could go to about 20,000 things, you know? So I continue until I feel very content in the energy of love and forgiveness and gratitude and happiness and contentment and all that good stuff. And once I am done with that, I just put my little gratitude journal off to the side. And now it's time to get down to the nitty gritty of exactly what it is that you wanted to hear. <laughs> How do I manifest great and wonderful things in the full moon? Well, as we just talked about, all those previous steps were necessary because if you don't prepare the, the body and the mind and the soul for manifestation using the full moon, you're going to manifest lack. You're gonna manifest endings and problems. So you need to prepare yourself 
for the manifestation. So when we, when we go to manifestation, most recently I've had really fantastic success with that scripting, which I cannot take credit for any of these manifestation methods. So let me just note that I've seen them on videos, or I've heard them, or I've read them on blogs or things of that nature. Um, I've had great success recently with the scripting method. And that was the one I was telling you guys about on Sunday night, where you write your letter to the universe or to your higher power or your higher self or your spirit guides or whomever you would want to tell all these wonderful things regarding the manifestations that you have received as blessings in your life. And you write the letter to this entity being source as a whole you write this letter from the standpoint of the fact that you already have everything you already have everything you could possibly want because when you have that energy of feeling like you have everything everything you could want everything you could need it leaves you in a space of feeling absolutely fulfilled absolutely fulfilled like you have no need for anything at all and when you're in that state you're not crying out to the universe or crying out to your spirit guides or crying out to your higher power your higher self saying oh my gosh why do i not have enough money why do i not have enough love why do i not have this why do i not have that why 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 isn't it here now and what the universe hears is I don't want X, Y, or Z because they're hearing the negative, right? They're hearing, hearing the complaint, the negative, the feeling of lack. They're like, oh, okay, well, you know, they don't need anything because they're focused on lack. So we're going to keep it right where it's at right now. In fact, we might even take a few things away. But if you go to source with this manifestation, feeling with every ounce of your soul, Every ounce of your soul, utilizing the energy you absorbed, grounding yourself out in nature, right? And you feel it in your soul like it's already yours. And you visualize it in your mind like it's already yours. Play it out like a, a movie in your mind space. Like it's already yours. Like, um, okay, what would be some examples? All right, you want that new job? <laughs> You want that new job? You're going for a new position? Perhaps it's a perhaps it's above where you're at now and you're a little bit worried about it. Instead, see yourself working in that job. See yourself happy, talking to your coworkers. Imagine these people you haven't even seen, right? Imagine their face. You're talking to your coworkers. You're receiving accolades for the work that you're doing. You've got this great working environment and just play it out like a movie in your head everything's working out just as you always wanted it, right? And then take a pause and stop and look at yourself and go, what would that company that I imagined in my mind space, what would that company be looking for in me? And take that time to reflect after you've written it out, take that time to reflect and then Make a plan on how to change yourself into exactly what that company would attract. Because that's going to bring about the manifestation. Because as you work on preparing yourself for that new role, and as you work on making those changes in your life for that new role, things are just going to start coming your way. You're going to be pulling that energy of that new job in, right? Same goes true if you're wanting, if you're wanting to increase your finances. How do you increase your finances through meditate, manifestation? The exact same way. You imagine yourself having all of this extra money to do good things in the world. Make it positive. <laughs> Keep it positive. We want it positive, right? Like maybe you start planning out that trip, that travel that you've always wanted to go on. But you have to write it out and then look within. The same goes true if you're going to use the 555 method, right? And the 555 method is that, or it is that for five days, you write out 55 times, five days straight. I prefer it 555, but that's just me. 
<laughs> I'm sort of a creature of habit. <laughs> so, so at 5.55 p.m. or a.m., whenever it's better for you, you write out 55 times what it is that you're trying to manifest. One sentence, 55 times on a piece of paper. And you set it aside. You do that for five days, then you set it and you forget it. But you do have to look within after and see what would make you what that person would want. And so those are, those are two very, very important principles of manifestation. Not to be sitting in a, in a place of lack and to also work on yourself to prepare yourself for exactly what it is you're manifesting. Same is, same is true in love, right? Same is true in love. If you are strongly desiring to um, reunite with someone, perhaps, right? Then you visualize the reunion in your head. <laughs> visualize it over and over and over again until you feel that you have created it and you've written it out. You're all thankful for it and all that. And then you have to look within. What do I need to change about myself in order for that to happen? Because you can't make your manifestations about somebody else, whether it's about a company, whether it's about a family member, whether it's about a friend, whether it's about a love interest, whether it's about a twin flame, whether it's about a soulmate, you know, you can't make your manifestation focused on that person because then you're focusing on lack. So you need to focus the energy with them. What would that person be looking for in you? What would that person be hoping to achieve from the exact same thing you're trying to manifest, right? Now, my absolute all-time favorite manifestation technique is the water manifestation. Now, I get a little bit all uh, <laughs> um, magical with mine. So, when I get my glass of water and so there is a link to the water manifestation and what i do with them right so i'll put that in the description box as well but i take that glass of water and i keep it between my hands and i visualize until the vision is gone and the vision is done right but meanwhile the glass is surrounded by crystals crystals that are meant to work on different things with whatever you're manifesting and then I also, I also utilize taper candles to kind of put my intention out to the universe that, hey, I'm very serious about this manifestation. Very, very serious. And so, so you, you want to kind of focus very, very strongly on that. And you know, if you're working on, you know, repairing something with a person, maybe put up a picture of them, something of that nature. Um, I remember back in, uh, 2018 when <laughs> I have been trying to manifest the return of my twin flame in 2018, right? <laughs> and I used water, I used water for it. And uh, I remember when he came back, I said, I said, why are you back? Cause I really wanted to know, did you feel me manifesting you back? His response to me with me, without me asking, Do, did you feel me manifesting you back? He said, well, I felt your energy calling me back. And so whether or not he was telling me the truth or not, I don't know, but it confirmed to me, it was the words that confirmed to me that yes, he could feel the energy connection as well. Does that make any sense? So, um, so just be cautious, use caution with what it is that you're trying to manifest. Don't focus on the fact that you're missing something in your life and focus within, always look within because your manifestation will come when you start working on you, whatever whatever direction it is. And as you start working on you, you're, you're putting energy off to the universe. It, oh yeah, 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 that manifestation that I told you about, I was serious about that. Um, I remember in my uh, scripting soon before I moved here to Florida and, and one of the things I had put in there was I was, I was very you know, happy about having this new wardrobe because I had gotten myself fit and lost all this weight and everything. Well, when I got here, I just, I just started walking like a beast everywhere. <laughs> and I didn't realize that I myself was stepping into the energy of bringing about my manifestation because I was no longer worried or focused on what I needed. I wasn't even focused on the manifestation letter at all. It was gone. It was lost. But I was like, oh. It's really nice here. I've got lots of energy, which is what I put in the manifestation letter. 
but I would have lots of energy to, you know, exercise and enjoy nature. And that's exactly what I've been doing. So be very specific when you write out your scripting, if you're going to do scripting. So now you've decluttered, you've done your meditation, you've done your grounding, you did your forgiveness ritual, you did your gratitude ritual, and now you've done your actual manifestation work. So now what? <laughs> release the energy. Release it, release it, release it. If you're scripting, put put your script put your script in an envelope or something. Set it away. You don't want to see it again. You have to let it go. You can't be focused on it forever, right? If you were doing water manifestation, do it once, clear, throw out the leftover candles. Who cares if they go out or they don't? Throw them out, put your crystals away, get back to life as normal, right? If you're doing 555, when you're done with the five days, toss, toss the list of 55 things, you know, five days. So you wanna release the energy. But that's not all because in this whole process, you have picked up a little bit of negative energy because you had to focus on the things that you needed to change in your life, which may have brought up some things about yourself that perhaps you weren't too thrilled about, or it might have brought up some things between you and another person that you didn't quite expect. And so you may be still kind of having a little bit of a, a negative energy around you. Well, the full moon's all about releasing. So the last and final step of my full moon ritual is I like to take a ritual detox bath. Ritual detox bath. Ladies, this does not mean you grab your wine and go sit in a hot bubble bath. <laughs> no, it's not about your wine or your beer or whatever. You know, you fill it, you fill a tub, usually with Epsom salts because you want it to be a detox bath, right? So. I like to use two cups of Epsom salts with it. Um, you can take some, um, you could take some like, like flower petals or something like that. Anything that will make it feel like an experience for you, right? Anything that's going to make it feel like an experience rather than just a plain old bath, right? So you use the um, Epsom salts detox. If you want to put a couple um, drops of essential oils in there, just make sure they're oils that are not going to be um be hard on your skin if you're if you have sensitive skin you can also get um epsom salts that have some smells already like there's a lavender one which would be great because it'll help you de-stress help you detox as well and then um the other thing i like to light a candle by the bath you know turn the lights out light the candle and just just sit in the energy of thankfulness and the energy of peace and the energy of feeling like I did everything that I needed to do to clear away any kind of negative energy in my life so I can start fresh when that new moon comes around and in the next two weeks after that full moon, I'll have all the energy that I need to spring forward towards my greatest desires and um, move on you know, towards those things. So that, my dears, in 30 minutes, <laughs> was my full moon ritual of how many things? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things. The eight things that I do for my full moon ritual day. I hope it's of help to you. You guys do take it to heart, remain positive, re release forgiveness, now, for those of you that are also energy workers, um, just an extra little tidbit. Those of you that are energy workers, say you do you do Reiki or if you do light language, something of that nature, um, while you are in that space of grounding, after the initial meditation, when you're out in nature for grounding, I find yourself a nice little spot that you can sit down and you can call forth the energy and then do a self scan and see if you need to do any self Reiki. Um, super, super important. Self scan, self Reiki if need be. Light, light workers allow any kind of downloads to come to you. If you feel like recording your, your light language, there's, there's some um, groups out on the internet where you could share it with and um, let it be a blessing to more than just you. All right, everyone, love and light to you. I wish you well on this full moon. 
and I will see you again soon. Oh, please share this with your friends and family. Share it, share it, share it. Give it to the people who you know need it. Give it to the spiritual newbies. Give it to the spiritual old ones. <laughs> Give it to anybody who's wanting to make a change in their life. All right? Thank you so much. Big hug from Kimmy. Kiss, kiss. Mwah. I'll see you soon. Bye.